children. And I love being an entrepreneur and I love living in this great city and I love living in Minnesota. Um, and so between our two businesses and our family, we're, we're, we're pretty active um, and over scheduled. So we're trying to fix that. Well, because of all of those things, all of those components of my life, um, I get overwhelmed and I can feel like I'm not doing enough or I, I have this saying where um, I have a lot of half-built bridges because I'm an idea person and it's really a blessing and a curse to have this ability to come up with lots of ideas. Um, like I have a million ideas for a paperclip, right? And so some people might say that's awesome, but for someone like me, it can be very distracting. You know, you always think of the next great thing. And so what that creates are these half-built bridges where we're halfway done, but not all the way done. And then another idea strikes and then we're halfway and then another one and another one and another one. And so because that is kind of my, my ever repeating pattern, I need something um, that is inwardly focused where I'm not on my perpetual drive and chase for either a solution or implementation of the next great idea. And I also spend a lot of my time outward. You know, I'm worried about my children, even though they're grown. I'm, you know, I, I never intend to be a person who worries, but I do. And so having a meditation practice becomes pretty critical um, to staying happy. and a teacher for eight. And back in the early days, I was that person in the back of the room quite often rolling my eyes. You know, like the teacher would say something about, you know, um, connecting and, um, you know, connecting breath through movement and being intentional and like all those like yogi things, you know? Like send breath to an area that's tight. Like she would say that and just, I would roll my eyes and be like, oh my God, you know, let's go, let's get into the physical practice. And that's why I started yoga, is I loved the combination of strength um, and flexibility. And I wanted to work out like I wanted to be challenged. And so I was very resistant to anything but the poses for a long time. And then when I I don't know how I got my brain to open up, probably when I went to teacher training. Um, and it started to see things very, very differently in that the poses are just one teeny tiny element to the whole big yoga puzzle. And I, I just can't believe it took me 10 years to realize that. Um, and then once I flipped the switch and opened my brain to all of the possibilities, the importance and validation of having a meditation practice made itself very clear to me. And now I can't believe I ever, I can't believe I ever rolled my eyes. Like, I feel like she was an ignorant person back then, you know, me. But I forgive her because she was busy and her kids were little and, you know. But yeah, that's where it happened, probably at the beginning of teacher training. So, I do have a physical practice and I practice every day. Um, and part of that is because I have a desk job and um, I don't like what a desk job creates, like how that feels in my body, that I'm very forward and rounded and, you know, always kind of down and hunched. So my physical practice is pretty important in that opening up and then also that too helps solve my million uses for a paperclip. I can not have ideas for a while. Um, and as far as my meditation practice, I actually do that twice a day. Um, I do it in the morning and I do it at night um, and I need it to feel centered in my gratitude um, because I think that if you're a person like me with this perpetual drive and this perpetual energy to keep going, it's sometimes difficult for me to be really happy with what I have because I'm in perpetual drive. So if I'm not purposeful about sitting down and reflecting on that and having some space for gratitude, it's amazing how quickly I lose it or, or forget 
You know, it's in that adage of counting my blessings. If I don't intentionally do that, it's like I have short-term memory loss or something, and I forget how abundant my life is. Before I started the practice, um, you know, still all connected to this, like, who I am and how I arrive. And it's that perpetual drive. I've had it my whole life. I don't ever really, I don't ever really calm down my body or my mind. Um, I don't know if it is connected to the time I was born or like my parents owned a business or I don't know, like I don't know why. Um, I'm always on go and not just like go meander, I'm on like go all the time. And I think that's hard on the people around me um, because I don't calm down and let moments be. And so my meditation practice helps me um, because without it, I never did it. I would say I would, but I wouldn't, you know, like, and my mom is the same way. We have this kind of saying in our family that we have to have busy hands always. Like if I'm watching TV, I'm crocheting or I'm knitting. If I'm sitting at one of the kids' sporting events, I'm crocheting or I'm knitting or I'm making a to-do list. Like I just have this perpetual motion of thoughts and actions. And once I started my meditation practice, I, I guess I learned that the ability to slow down and be in a moment actually gives you more moments because you're able to identify when you're in something great. And before I started practicing that, I was always chasing the great thing. So I read this book called The Present Present, like the gift is being in the present. And I think about that a lot when I am in my meditation practice, because again, I have short-term memory loss and I tend to forget. So that's why. <laughs> reflect a lot about wishing I could bring it to my kids and and I do try um, but I think for all of us you know just like me when I was rolling my eyes in the back of the yoga studio we all have to get there on our own and like the old me like the pushy drive you must you must it's it's hard to let them come into that through their own experience but you know my my oldest daughter has graduated from college and she's busy with her first job and she works for our business on the side and she's got a lot of great things going on and um, my oldest son is in college and thinks he wants to be a police officer and I would like him to meditate on that because I really don't want him to have a gun. And, <laughs> and then my, uh, my next daughter will be a junior in high school you know, she has a lot of influence in her life through social media and the perpetual chase of an Instagrammable moment. And my youngest son is a drummer and it's almost like the world picked up a kid of like the ocean, like a surfer kid and like plopped him in Minnesota, like that's my kid. He's very bouncy and like everything is just easy and breezy and he's just buoyant. But he too is always in a hurry, you know, like he's in a hurry to get through his chores. He's in a hurry to get through dinner. He's always in a hurry to get to the next thing. So how it's affected me as a mom is that I wish I could bring it to them. And I'm always looking for ways that I can do that. Even if it's in the moments where we slow down or even if it's in the moments where they have observation of my habits and my rituals and practices. Um, I wish I would have done it more when they were little, um, but I do hope someday they'll find it for themselves, you know, so I guess to answer the question is, I'd like to bring it to them, and they might not know that I'm actually more patient than I used to be. <laughs> I'm sure when they listen to this, they'll be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I'm better. <laughs> it's fun to think about them, and yeah, they're great. I'm so lucky. And that's, you know, that's the meditation thing too. Like the ability to slow down and you count your blessings like one by one and then you're filled up. Yeah.
look at me, I'm totally balling. Just thinking about my children, that's so motherly or so Jolini, like that's what I do. <laughs> I get overwhelmed with how I feel about them. Like, like any mom. The ability to make time for the, to be inward, and that's what it feels like for me. It's the opportunity to be inward. And when I first started, I was rolling my eyes, but then I you know, came to it on my own, is that I never understood in the beginning what I was supposed to be doing. You know, like the idea of clearing my mind. Like, how does someone do that? Like, I can't do that. There's no possible way I could do that. And I thought that I had to, like, try this void of, like, you know, nothing's popping in there, which for someone like me was really, really hard. But I can slow it and I can focus on one thing. So, for me, it's focusing on my breath in the morning, and at night, it's counting my blessings. And I think that in both of my businesses, it's easy to do the same thing. It's easy to think that we're not enough, we're not doing enough, we're not fast enough, we're not agile enough, like, we're not enough. And, you know, with this ability to practice, um, it helps in my businesses too, in that, you know, for those of us who are on, in the online space, I think it's really easy to get distracted. And it's really easy to think that there's something out there, there's a silver bullet, there's a solution, there's a technique or a strategy that if you're not doing it, you're missing out. And I finally learned that that's actually a lot of nonsense. And what wins is authenticity and consistency because consistency compounds. So just like with a meditation practice, you can't, for me, I couldn't just dabble in it and do it every now and again. I wouldn't learn. You know, I have to be consistent. And the same is true in our businesses. We stay consistent and we don't try to, you know, I hate the analogy, but you know, the one about eating an elephant. I mean, mm -hmm. There's got to be a better analogy, but that's the one I know. That you eat it one bite at a time. And I'd never eat an elephant, but you know, my point is that <laughs> you just have to slow down. and break things into manageable chunks. And I think that a meditation practice teaches you that, that you break it into manageable chunks. At least that's what it's taught me. Yes. <laughs> yes, I sure do. Um, and it's funny, I was just talking about that this morning with a friend over coffee. And my husband actually points it out to me a lot. Um, because I'll, I'll, He'll say, why don't you X, Y, Z? And then I'll say, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know if I have enough training. I don't know if I'm, you know, the expert that one would need to be to do that. And then he says things like, well, you know, if you look at it from like a gender perspective, a lot of men seem to have more confidence about things than they have earned. And women tend to have less confidence than they have earned. And he's like, do you think maybe you're doing that in this case? You know, like it's such a high barrier to entry um, for me for some reason. And I think he makes a really good point because um, I do know a lot of stuff and in different areas and areas of expertise. But I have that self-doubt when I'm not so sure that I do. And um, that can be a sabotager to all kinds of things. I think for me, the biggest challenge has probably been as a parent, you know, like, am I doing this right? And even though I have four amazing kids, there are, it's easy to have moments of doubt, you know, like, like, do they know just how much I love them? Like, for sure, even when they're in trouble, <laughs> you know, that there's this, that there's this uh, foundation and the safety that I love them unconditionally. And so I think that you know, and especially having, being a person with such a, uh, a prolific yoga practice, I guess. You know, a business that's about yoga, um, an intentional physical practice, my meditation practice. You know, like I'm, I feel like I'm, I do the work and, and the work doesn't feel like work. It feels like self-care um, and it feels like filling back up. And it's kind of getting control over those thoughts that can be
self-sabotaging and destructive. Because really, why on earth would one do that to yourself? You know, if you really think about it, like, why would you do that? Um, and so I think that it helps. It helps to recognize it for what it is, um, so that you can come out on the other side, you know, a champion of yourself. So to answer your question, yes. <laughs> and I'm working on it. That's a little, that's a little hook that we all get in you, so I get that out of me. For me, it's always coming back to gratitude because when I'm overwhelmed and I'm in the pinch, it's, it's with that perpetual drive of feeling like, you know, maybe mistakes that happen in our business or errors. I mean, we have 14 employees and a pretty complicated business structure. You know, sometimes things don't always go according to plan and I find myself getting frustrated because I feel like I've talked about this before or I thought we solved this or I thought we had a solution or a process and it turns out we didn't, you know, and that's really frustrating. Um, and when you have a day that compounds, like I had a day yesterday that it was compounding and I could feel it and I could feel myself being short with my husband, I could feel, I could just physically my shoulders were changing my like everything was just getting really tight and bunchy and so when that happens I've learned <laughs> like if I push through it will get worse <laughs> like it won't just go away <laughs> so I have to do something physical first so it's either walking my dog around the block or going for a bike ride or you know doing a few sun salutations just anything to just calm down all of that and then I have to go back to my gratitude journal because inside of that I have still so much to be happy about and grateful for and and I've lost it in those moments right like have you ever heard someone say like the the identity of your character reveals itself in the pinch right like who you really are is that person who behaves when there's stress or discomfort or whatever and if I'm like a raging tyrant I feel like I don't want that to be who I really am like yuck I don't like that person at all so I have to stop otherwise that's who I'll be and that's not who I identify with so I stop and you know sometimes it's inconvenient it's inconvenient for me it's inconvenient for the to-do list or the things that I've said I would do in that moment but if I don't, I'm not gonna like it an hour or two from. So that's my toolbox. And it doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, that's what I do. My husband actually is a source of great inspiration because he's just like a good person, you know? Like, he was an Eagle Scout, <laughs> if you know what that is. And he's just so morally sound, and he does the right thing even when the right thing is hard. And he, you know, honors, like, like the best way to describe Darren is he drives a BMW, but he composts, you know? <laughs> so he's just like this perfect mixture of, like, self-awareness and, like, a global citizen. You know, like, he just, he's a good, good person and he asks a lot of everyone else in their behavior um, because it's easy to fall into those behaviors of not being your best self and he challenges all of us to be our best self and i love that so much about him and his love language is what he does he does so much for so many people and i hope the children are observing because he's giving them a really good model of how you be a really great dad and a really great partner. So I am a huge fan of Deborah Adele. I keep, I think I have four or five copies of the Yamas and Niyamas. Um, I write in them. I, they all have like little flags sticking out of them. I'm dreaming of writing a course of taking other people through this amazing work and it's so simple and yet so impactful um, I give that book to people 
I don't know if they appreciate it, you know, when I've like written in the margin, like dry this. Um, <laughs> but I love it. I love it so much. And I've read it 15 times and I learn something new every single time. And just the, the manner in which you can learn to live a simple life just by following the yamas and niyamas and the examples that she provides and the thought-provoking questions of, you know, her journal prompts. It's, it's been such a great little find and it's like an $11 book and she's from Minnesota and I think she's a grandma now and she's just remarkable. This Minnesota woman is speaking to this Minnesota woman and I get it, like I totally understand it and I think that's why it's been a favorite. both know is true, but you see something that I don't see, but it's right there in front of us, you know, I, I'm probably a complicated way of saying there are science, there's science and there's facts, like, like facts and, and, you, and you can't break them, like they're there, like you can see it right in front of you, so I don't want you to call it something else, like I want us to agree that we see the same thing, and I think that that is what I would, what I would change. Because I think that our political climate, neighbor to neighbor relationships, like like if you take climate change for an example, right? Like one, a group of us look at the facts and data and see one thing, and then another group of us look at the facts and data, or don't look at the facts and data and see something completely different. So I would just, I would change that there are rules, <laughs> like when you see it and it's right there in front of you and it's a thing, that's the thing that it is. And then you have to decide what you're gonna do about it instead of saying you don't see it at all. Because I think that we're in a battle over truth and that's really frightening and scary, so that's what I would change. So I worry that, and I know that our country has been, we've been topsy-turvy before, and we always seem to make our, bring ourselves back to right. But what I find frightening is that this time, it's, an, it's a war of ideas and it's a war over facts, you know? And like how you take those facts and one team spins them this way and one team spins them that way. But ultimately, there's still those facts. Like, it's that, it's just how do we do that to each other? Just to win, you know? It's like we ground into our positions and we're not principled. Like we're not principle-centered at all. We're position-centered and that's really scary. Mm. Really scary. I love what you're doing and I feel a lot of gratitude to be invited to talk about this and because I don't, I would imagine that there are people who feel that that I'm not good enough, or I'm not doing enough, or I don't have enough, or like enough seems to be the word that plays on repeat. Not enough of this, not enough of that, whatever the blanks may be. And I think that through a meditation practice, and even if you don't want to call it a meditation practice, if that's too like woo woo or outside the box, right? All we're really saying is take a minute to be inward. That's it. That's all it is. Take a minute to focus on one thing, and that one thing could just be your breath. And once you do it, it's so freeing of the enoughs. And that's such a gift. It's so peaceful and validating that you are. You are enough. And you always have been. So, I really am. I'm grateful that I got to be here and talk about that because I learned it late. And not that I want to be full of regret, but I wish I would have learned it earlier. And that's why I keep planting the seeds for my kids. Like, I hope they learn it, find it. You know, all we can do is set a good example. So, because you can't really say, come meditate with me. <laughs> Could you imagine? That would be hilarious. <laughs> I'll, I'll report back what they do. 
<laughs> I'll, I know what I know what they'll do. I'll get an oh mom. Like that's what they'll do. Yeah. So Big Raven Yoga is um, our company. We've been around for a few years now, and um, we actually make yoga mats. And our yoga mats are not your standard issue yoga mat. Um, we're really proud. They are full color original artwork. Um, that's created either by me or someone on my team. And it's a really special piece of fitness equipment because the top is the yoga towel. And if you practice with a towel, many of us who do hate the towel. Like we hate it to the point of violence sometimes because it moves and it bunches and it's nasty and it's distracting. So our mats, the entire surface is the towel and then it's fused to a four and a half millimeter back and the back is pretty cool too because it's really dense um, and so it's not waffle weave it's not like what you'd get at a big box store um, it is a really dense eco rubber tree base so they're heavy they're like seven pounds um, and the reason they're so heavy is because you can put them in the washing machine and wash them so that's a little mind blower in the, like, in the yoga mat space. Like you can pick it up and put it in the washer and then hang it up to dry. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And then I would say the other thing is that, you know, for me, for a long time, I had just a black standard issue mat. And I don't know that I really thought about it all too much. Um, but when you can pick a mat that speaks to you in such a personal way, and maybe it has a statement on it, or maybe it has artwork that you enjoy, or you know, whatever you identify with. Our customers tell us they practice more because they feel called to the mat that they've selected that represents them or their intention. And it's pretty exciting to be involved in that with people. So yeah, so BigRavenYoga.com and we have more designs than we should and I'm sorry, my inability to make a decision about which ones to offer <laughs> is contagious. Like I can't decide and then our customers can't decide, but we have so many beautiful things to choose from. So good luck. <laughs> Pick a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but actually, so coming up for us though, um, we do change out our collections at the beginning of every month. So we're coming on a new collection here where there'll be 10 new designs. Um, and we actually have, um, we're teasing out a secret little project that we've been working on. And all I'll say is if you are into astrology um, and into the signs of the universe, this might be something you want to keep your eye on. It's pretty cool. I saw it.